In my previous video, we talked about how to size a wire. This video is part 2, where we will select the fuse size. It is important to select the wire size first, and then the fuse, because it will be based on the wire size. This video can be watched without the need for the previous video. If you found this video confusing, check out part 1. Do you remember our previous example, where I wanted to power my fridge in case of a grid down situation? We had a 12V battery with a 600W inverter. The total current was 62.5 amps, and we used a 6 gauge welding wire rated at 105 degrees Celsius insulation temperature. We now need a fuse between our calculated current of 62.5 amps and the maximum rating of the wire. As you can see from the table, the maximum current the wire can carry is 115 amps. A fuse in between these two values is 80 amps. We will use an 80 amp fuse. Easy right? Let's calculate a few more fuses. We will use the same diagram from our previous video. A 24 volt battery with a 40 amp charge controller, a 2000 watt inverter and a 300 watt DC to DC converter. Wire 1 from the battery to the bus bar had a maximum current of 120 amps. We chose a 4 gauge wire at 105 degrees Celsius temperature rating. This wire can carry a maximum of 150 amps. We now need to select a fuse between the lowest calculated current, which is 120 amps, and the maximum allowable current of the wire, which is 150 amps. A 125 amp mega fuse is ideal. Do you like the video so far? Please give it a like so I can make more content like this. Until now it has been easy, but sometimes the space between the lowest and the highest value is lower. In fact, there might be no possibility of a fuse between these two values. The next example, which is the wire from the charge controller to the bus bar, will show this. We calculated a maximum current of 50 amps. We then selected a wire that can carry 55 amps, which is an 8 gauge wire. We can only use a 50 amp fuse because that's the only value in between 50 and 55 amps. Let's say you have a mega fuse holder like the Victron bus bar. There is no mega fuse rated at 50 amps. The next mega fuse in line is 60 amps. But the wire is only rated for 55 amps. That's when we need to increase the wire size to 6 gauge. A 6 gauge wire from this manufacturer can carry a current of 115 amps. We can now select a new fuse. We need a mega fuse between 50 amps and 115 amps. A 60 amp mega fuse fits in between these values. If you cannot find the fuse in between the lower and the upper limit, then increase the wire size and try again. I have mentioned that there are no 50 amp mega fuses out there. At the end of the video, I will show you the different fuses and their available ratings. I will demonstrate why you should not use one chart or calculator for every wire. There are a lot of differences in wires. Only use charts when the manufacturer provides them to you. I will show you why in the following calculation. We will determine the fuse size from the bus bar to the DC to DC converter. We have a current of 16 amps. The wire sizing in the previous examples were based on welding cable where the lowest size was 8 gauge. 16 amps is too low to use 8 gauge, because it will be more expensive than needed, so we can use another wire. This manufacturer gives us a table where we can select the fuse sizes. It's a table for 105 degrees Celsius wire at 12 volts. Why 12 volts? If the voltage is increased, the diameter of the wire can be reduced, because there is less of a voltage drop. This table will look different when you use a 48 volt system. From the chart, we can see that we need a 14 gauge wire if the distance is shorter than 6 feet, but the lowest mega fuse is rated at 40 amps. So we need to select a wire that can carry at least 40 amps. That is an 8 gauge wire size. A fuse between 16 amps and 14 amps is 40 amps. So far, so good. Here comes the part where I want your full attention. Remember the wires from our previous supplier? Their chart showed that an 8 gauge wire can carry 55 amps. 
but this chart says we can use a maximum of 40 amps. Are you confused yet? I did some digging and discovered that the wire that can carry 40 amps is not 8 gauge. 8 gauge should be the same as 10 mm squared, but their datasheet shows it's an 8 mm square cable. That's why this cable can carry less current than the other. That's why not every chart or calculator should be used randomly. Only use the charts provided by the manufacturer of the wire. You see, choosing a fuse and wire size is not always straightforward. I understand the confusion. You can make your life easier by sticking to wires rated at 105 degrees Celsius and only using the charts provided by the manufacturer for the specific wire. You can find the wires that I recommend in the description below. I will recap the step-by-step -step fuse selection one more time. Step 1. You first calculate the amount of current through the wire. Step 2. Select a wire based on the current going through that wire. Step 3. You now have two current values. One rated at the nominal current through the wire and one of the wire itself. You now need to select a fuse rated in between these two values. Step 4. If there is no fuse value in between, increase the wire size. As promised, this table shows the available fuses for every type. I could have missed a fuse, so let me know in the comments if that is the case. For more information about fuse types, check my dedicated video. In that video, you will learn about the importance of the voltage rating of a fuse. Only use fuses and breakers from brands like Little Fuse, Blue Sea Systems, Schneider, Siemens or Busman. Subscribe for more videos like this and watch these videos next.